Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our study group um, of the text in A Course in Miracles. And I'm my name is Eloisa Ramos, and I'm here with my friend Teresa, Teresa, and my daughter Sonia. And today we're going to continue with Chapter Twelve, the Holy Spirit's Curriculum, and we are on Section Four, Seeking and Finding. Okay. Um, let's see. Last time, let me see if I can just review a little bit. Last time we we were talking about the investment in reality. Um, let me just read a little bit from the from there. Let me let me go back so we can just review a tiny bit. Um, investment in reality. Uh, paragraph five. Salvation is for the mind, and it is attained through okay. peace. Okay. Um, okay. And then uh, the paragraph four before that, recognize what does not matter. And if your brother asks you for something, quote unquote, outrageous, do it because it does not matter. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. So it's about being able to recognize that what matters or what is valuable is reality. And reality is is love, okay? And the things of the world that are temporary, that come and go, um, are not of God because God is eternal love, it's unconditional love. And so to recognize what does not matter is to recognize that the things of the world are not reality. Okay. And, and so that's why we would do something quote unquote outrageous. That doesn't mean that, you know, we would do something that um, that's insane. <laughs> you know, if someone, if someone says, Hey, you know, I'm going to go jump off the bridge. <laughs> you want to go with me? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, um, it, it just, it means, um, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that. It just means that when someone is very, very insistent, they are believing that their salvation lies in doing whatever they they want to do. Or, you know, if they're asking for money, they believe their salvation depends you can tell when someone is very desperate and really needs you to be there and sometimes you know you're you're there's resistance to that because you can feel like oh my god you know this is the fourth time they borrowed money from me they have they haven't paid me back you know <laughs> so so it's about going deeper and recognizing the truth about our brother and about their true loving nature and their true essential self and trusting that and um and and giving because because in giving we recognize that we have and that's what abundance is uh, so there's no loss in us you know um giving our brother what they ask for does that make sense yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go to the seeking and finding. Paragraph one. Uh, the ego is certain that love is dangerous. And this is always its central teaching. It never puts it this way. On the contrary, everyone who believes that the ego is salvation seems to be intensely engaged in the search for love. Yet the ego, though encouraging the search for love very actively, makes one proviso. Do not find it. Its dictates then can be summed up simply as, quote, seek and do not find, unquote. This is the one promise the ego holds out to you and the one promise it will keep. For the ego pursues its goals with fanatic insistence and its judgment, though severely impaired, is completely consistent. 
Okay. So, so the out the outcome of following the the ego thought system is basically to seek and not find. So there's there's you know a lot of disappointment. There's a lot of sadness. There's a, a lot of quote unquote loss because um, because though the ego pretends that you know it wants us to find love, it wants us to find happiness. Um, it's really intent on making sure that we don't, um, because if we did, we would lose, we would stop believing in it. <laughs> um, so, um, so it does teach that love is dangerous. In other words, to be afraid of love. So like I was saying before, you would want to, you know, your friends, here's, here's your friend or your cousin or whoever is asking you for money again. And, and you're like, oh, my God, is he going to pay me? Um, and so the ego would want to paint that as to be loving is is dangerous here. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know, <laughs> it's against your best interests, you know. Uh, so. Um, so to the ego, love would be very foolish, or it would be, um, let's see, uh, asking for a loss. You know, that's how it paints love. So, um, it, and also, um, it wants to make sure that we seek for love where there is no love. So we're seeking for love in the world of impermanence where um, everything is uh, not lasting. So that cannot be true love um, because it's, you know, there and then it's gone. It's special, basically. Um, and because it's special, it has to be scarce. And therefore, if we gain it, we're going to we're going to end up losing it. That kind of a thing. Um, OK, OK, so. Paragraph two. The search the ego undertakes is therefore bound to be defeated. And since it also teaches that it is your identification, its guidance leads you to a journey which must end in perceived self-defeat. For the ego cannot love and in its frantic search for love, it is seeking what it is afraid to find. The search is inevitable because the ego is part of your mind. And because of its source, the ego is not wholly split off or it could not be believed at all. For it is your mind that believes in it and gives existence to it. Yet it is also your mind that has the power to deny the ego's existence. And you will surely do so when you realize exactly what the journey is on which the ego sets you. So the, the journey or the search the ego undertakes is basically just failure, so you can do not find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and it teaches that it it the ego is your identification that that we are the ego. Um. So it's a self defeat. We do it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, it's perceived self-defeat, so it would be like self-sabotage. Yeah. And, you know, when we identify with the ego, the ego cannot love. So it literally denies the truth of how we were created as love. So it's a denial of our true essential nature as loving. Um. And in its frantic search, it's seeking what it is afraid to find. It actually rem reminds me of that soap opera we were watching, Sonia, the Korean one, with the sisters, the um, 
Sister Fia, the mace, the, the, the one we just finished watching. It's so called when the weather was fine. Yeah, mm -hmm, that one, because the, the sisters are in these uh, relationships that are all really ego, you know, special love, special hate. Um, uh, but but you know there's a, a really beautiful contrast there with the younger daughter um, finding um, a love that is not ego based but is um, unconditional love. So it was a really it was a, a really beautiful thing to be able to see that coming having come come from that you could say that legacy or that background. The main character is able to find um, well. The two main characters are able to recognize that that what they have is real love. It's not special love. So yes, and so let's see. But it but this paragraph also talks about how our mind is the believer of the ego. And um, so it also has the power to deny the ego's existence by letting go of that belief. And of course, letting go of the identification. And it says, and you will do that when you realize exactly where it's taking you. Uh, which is basically nowhere, <laughs> you know, just self-defeat. So if we really, really could see that that's the journey we're embarking on, we would really not follow the ego. Okay. Any questions? Okay, number three. It is surely obvious that no one wants to find what would utterly defeat him. Being unable to love, mm -hmm. the ego would be totally inadequate in mm -hmm. love's presence, for it, it could not respond at all. Then you would have to abandon the ego's guidance, for it would be quite apparent that it had not taught you the response you need. The ego will therefore distort love and teach you that love really calls forth the responses the ego can teach. Follow its teaching then, and you will search for love, but will not recognize it. Mm. Yeah. It just, it just sounds weird. It sounds like what happens is, so you might ex see or experience real love as, you know, we know it. And the ego will try to tell you that's not it. Yes, um, because <laughs> let's see, you will not recognize it. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. So love, so love is right there, and you say no to it. You go off, to, to live in another country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's what happened in this soap opera. <laughs> A sister, um, you know there was someone there that had basically loved her ever since they were in high school. And he, wow. she just, she couldn't, she couldn't recognize it or she couldn't allow herself to recognize it because she felt so guilty. Um, you know? Yes. Yeah, so, so there it's, there's, there's a lot of guilt in that, uh, and that soap opera there, you could really see the detrimental effect um, of that and how it how it even showed up physically. Um, all that guilt ended up, she ended up uh, with, a, with a, a problem. She was losing her eyesight with her eyes. So, um, but anyway. Yeah, that's okay. because she couldn't see love when it was in front of her. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Because it was all the guilt from what had happened in the past that sh that kept her blind, literally. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was very symbolic in that, in that reason, for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
okay, next paragraph. Uh, let's see. So four, do you realize that the ego must set you on a journey which cannot but lead to a sense of futility and depression? To seek and not to find is hardly joyous. Is this the promise you would keep? The Holy Spirit offers you another promise and one that will lead to joy. For his promise is always, quote, seek and you will find, unquote. And under his guidance, you cannot be defeated. His is the journey to accomplishment and the goal he sets before you, he will give you. For he will never deceive God's son, whom he loves with the love of the father. Okay, so this is a pretty good, you know, um, summary of where the the ego is going and where the Holy Spirit's going. So the decision is is pretty clear when it's when you can see it this this way. Um, but a lot of times we don't we we're um, really our thinking is so upside down, you know, that we can be confusing attack for love. And so we're really, you know, um, thinking that, oh, this is love and it's really attack. You see what I'm saying? Um, so let me see if I can think of an example. Oh, um, let's see, I was, I was clearing something for my son and he said, oh, well, he says, you know, I'm just used to, because we're working on, on the smoking, he's smoking. And he says, well, I'm just used to, so what I'm used to is what's good for me. So he has, by association, said, anything that I get used to is good for me. <laughs> okay, so what he's basically saying is that what is good, you know, you have to get used to it because it's not naturally, um, because there's resistance to it. Do you see what I'm saying? Because. Uh, in, so in other words, it's not, it's something you have to train yourself and it's, it's actually reversed. It's actually the ego thought system that we, ha we train ourselves to get used to. And then because we're used to it, we think that it's good. So we have it reversed. That's why we're afraid of love because now we think that the opposite of the ego thought system is fearful. And it's actually the ego thought system that's fearful. So we flip it backwards. And so then we're really confused. Um, and that's why we get stuck seeking and not finding. It, it's a little bit like, you know, being in water, uh, like say you're in the ocean and you lose your bearing of which way is up to the surface. So you keep swimming down. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, number six. Oh, no, number five. Uh, Sonia. Oh, it is? Okay. Um, you will undertake a journey because you are not at home in this world. And you will search for your home, whether you realize where it is or not. If you believe it is out, it is outside you, the search will be futile, for you will be seeking it where it is not. You do not remember how to look within, for you do not believe your home is there. Yet the Holy Spirit remembers it for you, and he will guide you to your home because that is his mission. As he fulfills his mission, he will teach you yours for your mission is the same as his. By guiding your brothers home, you are but following him. Yeah, I've been doing number three a lot <laughs> by believing if, if it's outside you, the search will be futile for you will be seeking it where it is not. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I have an example, like, because I was thinking about the, the, the show, too, that we were watching. Um, and I really like one of the characters worked at a town hall as a civil servant. He was a city planner. And he ended up uh, explaining to this girl that he liked um, that he he went to like the top university was a top student, top of the class, everything. Um, he could have had a career um, in, you know, the biggest city and done whatever, but he chose to go back to his hometown um, and just live a regular nine to six life um, just in his really small hometown instead of doing everything else. And the girl was like, well, why would you do that? You know, you, you were such a, you had all this potential and everything. And he said, well, because I'm happy, you know, I'm, I'm happy just being here and just living like this every day and very just simple, simple life. Um, and uh, I think I really like that because I think the search outside of you would have been the trying to seek for the career and the goal and the money and the, and the whatever. Um, but that character chose to not do that. And I used to think that about like traveling and stuff. Like I really, you know, wanted to go out and, and uh, travel and live abroad and da 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 da. Um, Cause I thought that that was a search outside. <laughs> that would make me happy. <laughs> um, so I don't know if that's a good example of this cause that's what just was coming up for me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good example. Um, I mean, home, you know, home is where we feel <laughs> our, where we can be ourselves, basically, when we get, where we can be comfortable. And so we we think that it's there's a place for us out there in the world, whether it's, you know, the right career or whether it's the right, you know, location or whether it's with the right person or so we tend to look outside to find that um because because we recognize within that there's something that's missing there um but it's not until we actually go within and look for what is within that we discover that um that we have everything we are everything because we are as god created us and so that is our home. God is our home. <laughs> um, and, um, and that's where we are our true self. And that's where we can be at peace. And that's where we are happy. So that the external situations are not, uh, they're not taken seriously, because that's not, they don't have an effect on, on the, um, on the happiness that we have. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and then uh, and that's basically the mission that the Holy Spirit has. So five says the Holy Spirit remembers it for you and he will guide you to your home because that is his mission. OK. And as he fulfills his mission, he will teach you yours for your mission is the same. And so that's all we're doing here is we're um, here to help um, to heal our mind. And then uh, be able to help others heal their mind. Guide your brothers home. Uh -huh. Because we are but following the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay, number six. Behold the guide your father gave you, that you might learn you have eternal life. For death is not your father's will, nor yours. And whatever is true is the will of the father. You pay no price for life for that was given to you, given you, but you do pay a price for death and a very heavy one. If death is your treasure, you will sell everything else to purchase it. And you will believe that you have purchased it because you have sold everything else. Yet you cannot sell the kingdom of heaven. Your inheritance can neither be bought nor sold. There can be no disinherited parts of the sonship for God is whole and all his extensions are like him. You know, this finally gives meaning to the story of the prodigal son. 
and that the prodigal son left and ran around and did all this crazy stuff, but he's always welcomed back in his father's household. So we're always welcomed back in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. We can go out there and seek, you know, all this stuff in the world, but like the previous paragraph says, it does, it's not worthwhile. It's not joyful. And yes. what's interesting is, is when you finally realize that it's not out there, it's within that you need to look. But what's really helpful is that the Holy Spirit's there to guide us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And um, line, line four uh, talks about line three, you pay no price for life or that was given you, but you do pay a price for death and it's a very heavy one. So the, so life is eternal. Okay. But when we undertake this journey with the ego, it's really a journey of death because we, we believe now that we are a body and that the body is life and the, the life is no longer eternal. So now there's death. So that's why it says that, mm, that by following the ego, we're believing that death is your treasure. So, um, it, and what's interesting is today's lesson is um, there is no death. It's 163. The son of God is free. Um, and, 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 and it also talks about death as taking many forms, you know, it may appear as sadness, fear, anxiety, or doubt, anger, faithlessness, and lack of trust, concerns for bodies, envy, and all forms in which the wish to be as you are not may come to tempt you. And all such thoughts are but reflections of the worshiping of death as savior and as a giver of release. So, um, <clears throat> so, so once we believe that the body is life, we literally believe that suffering is um, life, <laughs> you know, because the body suffers. And then, and therefore the release from, of the body from life, which is death would mean salvation. Um, you know, in the, the course talks about the attraction to death. So that's, that's why the death would be attractive is because we're confusing the body with life and life is given by God and that life is eternal. So it cannot be that, that the body is life because the body is not eternal. Um, but, but you know, it's saying that, okay, if you're going to identify with life and being a body, then um, there's, you're going to suffer loss because you're going to basically sell everything. You're going to give up your inheritance of being an eternal son of God to come into a world where nothing is eternal. Everything is lost. Um, so, um, yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of people say, well, the only thing that's, uh, that's, that, that lasts or what are they, how do they say it? the only thing that, um, uh, that doesn't change or last is is taxes and death or something like that <laughs> yes there are only two things that are inevitable deaths and taxes there you go <laughs> but the only thing you can count on <laughs> two <things>. exactly <laughs> yeah and so this is saying look you really cannot sell the kingdom of heaven we can't lose it um even though we think we can so seven your inher inheritance can neither be bought nor sold. There can be no disinherited parts of the sonship. For God is whole and all his extensions are like him. So the our home is still with us. Um, it's just a matter of following the Holy Spirit um, to, so that we can seek and find and, um, and let it go, letting go of following the ego. Okay, so number seven, let's see. The atonement is not the price of your wholeness, but it is the price of your awareness of your wholeness. For what you choose to quote unquote sell 
had to be kept for you since you could not quote unquote buy it back. Yet you must invest in it, not with money, but with spirit. For spirit is will and will is the quote unquote price of the kingdom. Your inheritance awaits only the recognition that you have been redeemed. The Holy Spirit guides you into eternal life, but you must relinquish your investment in death or you will not see life though it is all around you. Okay, so now we see how this section ties with the previous section, which was the investment in reality. Okay, um, because because this is this is what it's saying here. Okay, we have to relinquish line six, relinquish our investment in death and invest in reality, <laughs> because it's all around us. It's just that we have. Um, lost the awareness of it because we have not followed the Holy Spirit. We've listened to a, another voice for separation. And that's what the atonement is. The atonement is the, the return to wholeness because it's a reminder that the separation never happened. So we have not lost our home. We have not lost our wholeness. Um, and um, and we did not sell <laughs> our inheritance. The Holy Spirit has kept it for us um, because it's not something you can buy. It already belongs to us. So, uh, however, we must invest in it, um, but with spirit, which is will. So we have to have that willingness um, and give that to the Holy Spirit to help us return home. Um, and that's the only thing that it, that, you know, it's at, that's the quote unquote price of the kingdom. That's the only thing it asks. It's for a little willingness. Um, and the inheritance awaits the recognition that you have been re redeemed. So, um, um, Yes, so so that's the what Teresa was saying. The redemption is the the prodigal son returning home, you know, finally recognizing <laughs> his error. Get the ego, right? <laughs> yeah, he followed the ego, and now he's back home. Um, so yes, okay, okay. So that's the end of this section. Um, and let's see, seeking and finding. So, uh, okay, the next one is the same curriculum. So unless there's any questions, we can go ahead and stop. Any questions? No? All right. All right, so thank you, everyone. <laughs>